everybody, this is Mateo, and I know this episode is a day late, but I had recorded it, but the recording failed, and I really didn't feel like re-recording it that day, so instead I just finished uh, putting the music to all the battles in the future parts, so I'm done with that finally, so I have a little bit more free time at least. I'm all, I'm all, yeah. I'm all, also, almost, that's what was tripping me up, I kept on wanting to say all, also, or I was kept on trying to say the other word first. I am also almost done with homework. I only have like three more days of reading because I just scheduled it to have like two chapters a day. So it's not too much, not too little. I'm making progress with it. And I only have like three more days of it, so that's pretty cool. And you might have, okay. Uh, you might have seen that. Uh, a patch of grass to the right of the cycling road earlier. I thought there were no Pokemon there. Well, I was wrong. You can find a Ponyta there. Uh, among other Pokemon, but Ponyta is the new Pokemon that you can find there. So we're going to come back here later. I mistook which route you could find Ponyta in. I thought it was the next one, but no, it's this one. Also in the water here, there's a bunch of new Pokemon that we can find, but we don't have the means of catching them yet, both by surfing and we don't have a super rod slash good rod. We actually get those later on. And like I said in the last part, basically the bikers have uh, the poison type Pokemon of wheezing, coughing, that's pretty much all they have. And the cue balls have the fighting Pokemon, which is basically Mankey and Machops and Machokes. But, yeah, that's pretty much how these guys work. They don't look any different on the world map. Route whatever. But once you fight them, you know what you're dealing with immediately. Because that's how these Pokemon games work. I mean, might as well just call them Fighting Trainer and stuff like that. Okay, we're almost to Fuchsia City. And there are some trainers on the other side of that cycling road that I passed up. I really don't care enough about them. They're repetitive enough already, and the experience isn't that great. It's good, but it's not worth going back up the cycling road or ride it a second time to find them. So, yeah, skipping that. It's just amazing how quickly... The, all the, oh, Muck, that's another Pokemon that they sometimes use. But see, this is what I'm saying. Dug Trio is so fast that nobody can hit it, and it's so powerful that it'll knock it down in one turn. What does this say? Don't throw the game, throw Pokeballs instead. Wait, what? It's noticed. Don't throw the game. The game. I just lost the game! Way to go, Pokemon! Thank you so much! Trolling since 1996. Fantastic! Thank you! That's exactly what I wanted to be doing this morning. All of a sudden, I don't want to record this anymore, otherwise it might make me lose the game again. Oh well. Uh, what was it? Oh yeah, Doug Trio is so quick. And so powerful that it will knock out the Pokemon in a single turn. And it's really low defense, just really doesn't matter anymore. Really low defense and really low HP. So it really doesn't matter anymore. So Dugtrio is an awesome Pokemon. Why did I never use it before? I don't know. I just never really realized how powerful ground types could be. Especially this one. This one's amazing. It's just making up gigantic holes and defeating these Pokemon like nothing. Too bad I ran out of dig there, but oh well. Now then, if we could continue on, we're almost done here. In fact, this is pretty much it, and we're finally off the cycling road. I can finally bike at a normal speed no matter what. Hooray! We have some trainers over there. Well, what can we find up here? Normally you can find one of Professor Oak's aids up here. That will give you a certain Pokemon depending on how many Pokemon you've caught. But not that time, Tangela for a Parasect. So he wants a Tangela, he'll give you a Parasect. That is an awful trade. Um, although Tangela isn't that great of a Pokemon, it's a lot easier to find a Parasect 
And Parasect isn't too terribly great either, so just pay no mind to it. I mean, by now you should already have a Parasect if you really wanted one. But now we start the part of the game where there seems to be a lot of bird trainers. So, goodbye poison type, hello flying type. So Pikachu is finally going to get some screen time after a while, except, okay, it didn't faint him, okay. We're good then. But yeah, it seems like a good majority of the trainers within this part of the game are bird keepers. And they just use your basic flying types like Fearows, Pidgeotos, uh, Dodrios. Barely any of them use Dodrios though, and in my opinion Dodrio is the coolest flying type just because it's somewhat original. It's not like a basic bird, it's more like a double-headed ostrich thingy. And it is cool, except not an ostrich necessarily, but it's just a slightly different looking bird. So yay for that. I don't know, if I were to have to use a flying type, it would probably be Dodrio, which I'm using as my fly slave. Partially because I can point out of how Dodrio could possibly fly without any wings, and then it's like both an actual helicopter. I'm sure there's a picture of that somewhere on the internet, and you could just search, like, How does Doduo fly? And you'll find it. Um, it's okay. I guess, sir. Oh, he has a Dodrio. That's cool. Level 34. My god, he way over levels pretty much everybody else at this point in the game. And a nice critical hit. So, there we go. We are Pikachu's now level 32. So it's finally gaining some levels again. Now then, let's go on over and of course one last patch of grass. And that's like the only random encounter that we're going to get this entire part. Because now we're in the pink village. Yes, for whatever reason everything is pink. Well this is the poison, although they could have made it purple. But then again, lavender is already purple, so... Is fuchsia? I'm guessing fuchsia is a shade of pink. In case you couldn't tell, all these towns are named after colors, and palette is like the color palette. So, yeah. Could have sworn that fuchsia was a shade of, like, purple. Maybe it's a pinkish purple. I don't- Why am I talking about colors? Oh well, it's better than the first version of this recording where I had literally nothing to talk about during this time. Like, seriously, there was a 20 second bit of silence as I was going through the Pokemon Center, trying to think of something to talk about. I was really kind of dead, and I am kind of glad that uh, the recording failed. Although it is kind of annoying to re-record this, I'm kind of glad that it, it failed in the long run, because I could make something a little better, of course, Poison. But yeah, for whatever reason, this is the Poison type gym, however, for whatever reason, the trainers in there really don't feel like using poison type Pokemon. Which I am partially glad about because we just went down the cycling road, which about 90% of the trainers there were poison type trainers, and it would have just been all the more repetitive. So we're going to use an antidote instead of just go to the Pokemon Center, which is like five feet away. Uh, of course. This guy is strange with his pink hair. Oh god, this guy. He talks about strategy being better than brute strength. But then when you watch him battle, and his level 38 Hypno, my god. Just watch, his strategy is brute strength. Psychic, that's the strongest psychic type move in the game. He didn't even like prepare or anything, there wasn't a strategy behind that. He just used psychic, because it's really powerful. So, so much for strategy, good sir. Excuse me. So much for strategy, good sir, you're just using brute strength. But, whatever. And now I'm going to bring out Dugtrio because this is getting ridiculous. And, yeah. So there's that. And now that two Pokemon are fainted, I kind of have to go back to the Pokemon Center. I'm going to try to want to get Flareon to learn a fire type move. It, the first flying t not flying type. The first fire type move that I can learn is Fire Spin, which is one of those um, continuous attack turns that won't let your opponent attack. Which doesn't seem all that great, but since Flareon is usually faster than its opponent, 
uh, your opponent will not get a chance to attack unless the fire spin somehow misses. And yes, Koga does use fire, er, no, god. He uses poison type Pokemon and like most of his trainers, most of his disciples, but instead they are also part bug type to give you a little hint as to that. So Fire Spin will be helpful, and if not, we have Dugtrio as backup. Although Dugtrio has been getting a ton of levels, I'd rather somebody else take the experience now. So we're going with this, and still not a single Poison type. We're having a lot of Psychic types though, for whatever reason. But yeah. Uh, b the basic idea behind this gym is that there are invisible walls. Invisible in quotes. They aren't invisible in this game, you could see like little dots in the floor. In the blue lines of the floor you'll see little pink dots and those mark the walls. I might not have been able to see them on a smaller Game Boy screen, maybe, but in this you really can, so it's pretty easy. I'm not sure, in Fire Red there might not be any dots or anything to mark the walls. I don't know, I never played Fire Red on it. A uh, larger screen. So, yeah. But at least we can go through and easily make our way through this rather than stumble through an invisible maze. At least it would be better than a maze of mirrors. My god, when I was like seven or so and we went to a carnival type place, we went through a maze of mirrors and I kept on running into the mirrors because I was dumb and could not hold my two hands in front of me. But, yeah, so, at least I'm safe. Oh, Hitmonlee, you're not doing all too great. Oh my. Okay. That was close. Oh yeah, and Hitmonlee. Uh, it now has a nickname in the form of Kicks. It was suggested by Hackers Galore. Last part. So, yeah. We now have... Dago, the Pikachu, Hori, uh, I still don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, Hori, the Doug Trio, and Kix, the Hitmonlee, and no love for Flareon whatsoever, so hooray for that. But, oh well. Uh, why are Sand Slashes so defensive? Oh my god. I mean, I know that they're kind of the more defensive and more HP version of Doug Trio at the cost of less attack and less speed, but still. Oh hey, and we're finally learning Fire Spin, that's nice. And Flareon finally has 100 HP. Is Flareon the only Pokemon I have that has 100 HP so far? Because if so, that's strange. I mean, I know Dugtrio is not supposed to have much HP. Pikachu isn't fully evolved, it could probably have 100 HP by now. Well, no, it's only level 32. Him on Lee, I'm not sure about him on Lee, although I'm pretty sure it doesn't have 100 HP yet. So, Flareon is slightly defensive in that case. That is odd. But, whatever. Uh, the Drowsies, they're the. They don't. They have more defense than Kandabra, so they could take a hit. Uh, oh god, another hit. No, this is not looking good already. At least it's only using Headbutt which it will be pretty weak because it doesn't have much attack power. But, oh well. With that, we are pretty much it for this episode. We are pretty much done. In the next part, we'll take on the gym leader, which is right over here. See you then.